Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commands hang all the, prophet, the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy upon us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And, and on earth, peace, good will towards men. We praise Thee. We bless Thee. We worship Thee. We glorify Thee. We give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of Father, that you take us away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that take us away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with us here. Let us pray. Everlasting God, Thou hast ordained and constituted in a wonderful order the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as Thy holy angels always serve and worship thee in heaven, so by thy appointment they may help and defend us here on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 <coughs> Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. first lesson is written in the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the 10th verse. Jake left Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he came to a certain place and stayed there that night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep, and he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. And then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> All right, let us rise and read Psalm 103 responsibly by the whole verse. Bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the dead, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and bound instead of as slow. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does, he does not, not deal with us according to our sins, sins nor obey us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As, as far, far as the east is from the west, west so, so far as does he remove our transgressions from us. As the Father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children. To those who is his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you men's angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers, who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. The second lesson is written in the twelfth chapter of the book of Revelation to St. John, beginning at the seventh verse. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated. And there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And a great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to you, O earth and sea. For the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory Glory be to you, o Lord. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, Lord Christ. Christ.
You may be seated. All right, today is the, the feast day commemorating St. Michael and all angels. And even though that's the case, it's interesting to me. Well, I always find it interesting what readings are chosen from the lectionary. And we have, I'm going to focus primarily on the Old Testament and the New Testament lessons. Uh, excuse me, the Old Testament and then the Gospel lesson. And they're obviously connected. You probably noticed the, the, this ladder that angels are going up and down on in both of those lessons. They're purposefully connected. And there's something else from the Old Testament lesson that uh, the Apostle Paul ends up drawing on concerning the promise that God gives to his people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I just want to point out and dive into just a little bit, looking at God's plan of salvation. And uh, in so doing, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about angels. They're important, but they're the servants of God carrying out his will and doing what? Pointing to Jesus. It's not about them, and they know it. So I'll say one thing about angels we would do well, and all God's people who believe the scriptures would do well, to be a little more like them, to, to carry out his will and to point back to him and to give the Lord Jesus the glory. Just real quick, I'm going to mark a page. I forgot to bring my Bible up here. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, when we're looking at the Old Testament reading, well, sure, I'll take because I did mark the specific page. Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> that wasn't even a hint, so that was so nice of you. Now, the Old Testament reading is Jacob, he's traveling over to his, where his uncle lives because it's a, it's a, a double purpose, right? Esau wants to kill him. So, you know, he stole his birthright and all that stuff. So, you know, his brother wants to kill him. His mom finds out about it. She's like, you need to get out of here. And also, why don't you go to my brother? Maybe you'll find a wife there. So that's what he's doing, right? He's traveling over to his uncle Laban. And in the midst of that, he ends up just stopping at some old place because uh, it's nighttime. And he goes to, to sleep. And... Uh, you know, just like we do, he grabbed a rock as a pillow. You know, I'm thinking about, I, started, I stayed in Airbnb last night, which was fine. Uh, and I'm, I'm cheap, too, so I tend to do that more than hotels. And I do, I got a little, little crick in the neck this morning. You know, and it's funny, as I, was, as I was going over this, I'm like, well, he's using a rock as a stone. Maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, complain too much and be too whiny. But yeah, a rock is a stone. The Bible lets us know that detail. And... He falls asleep, and he has this dream. And in this dream, God communicates to him. And we see that, behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth. So the bottom of it is on the earth, but the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And then the Lord is standing above it, and he proclaims his covenant promise to Jacob, which he had already given multiple times to Abraham earlier in Genesis, so Abraham had received a covenant. It had been repeated multiple times. And then Abraham's son Isaac is the continuation of that promise. And then Isaac has Jacob and Esau, but only Jacob is the one through whom the promise continues. So the Lord God is reaffirming this covenant. But there's this ladder. And so he sees this connection between heaven and earth. And the angels are going up and down, which makes sense. They're, they're the ministers of God. They're, uh, just, just so you know, a little thing about angels and the word and what their name means, it's, that's basically just a Greek word brought into English, angelos. It's just the word angel. And, and what is that? It means messenger, actually. It, for a long time, just meant messenger. But eventually in the scriptures, we saw that, well, they're not just human messengers. There are these beings that are supernatural, and they're being called the same thing. So eventually there, 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 ha there tends to, well, well, well there, there develops this idea of a, a, a unique messenger that's a supernatural being. And so that's the same in the Old Testament as well. The word for angel is this word that means 
uh, messenger. And they're, they're going up and down on this ladder, so we know that they're carrying out the, the will of God. There's this connection between heaven and earth, and of course we're going to see that Jesus calls himself that ladder to Nathaniel. He says, you're going to see the angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So there's something important there that he's reaching back into this momentous event that happens in the life of a patriarch of Jacob. And he says, I was there. I am that connection. That thing that he saw, it wasn't just about this, this promise of having a, a, a ton of children and having a certain plot of land, although that is a very important aspect of it, but there was more to it. And the Apostle Paul does quite a bit to tease out certain aspects of the Old Testament promises that we may not have picked up on. And he does that even with this particular promise. Um, the Apostle Paul is going to reference the promise given to Abraham, but the, the part he quotes is identical. So I just, I just want to point one thing out to you. When we're looking here in Genesis, and we're looking at the promise that God gives. He says, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. So, so far, it's, I'm going to make your descendants my special holy people. Right? So Abraham was called out of the land of Ur. He was a pagan. He, he worshipped false gods. And then the God appeared to him and called him out of that. And I'm going to make through you a, a people for my own possession. And I'm going to give you this particular plot of land. And I'm going to bless you. You're going to have so many kids you won't even be able to count your descendants. More than the dust. Okay, So he says all these things. But there's another aspect of it. Right where I left off, he says this, And in you and your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So how does that work? In you, these other families are going to be blessed. Hmm. Now, it's translated that way because of what the Apostle Paul teaches later about this promise. And we're going to read it in a second. But, just so you know, that is not the way that Abraham, excuse me, that Jacob would have understood it. So I'm going to teach you a little thing about verbs, but don't, don't check out on me. It's interesting, okay? I, I promise. No pun intended. So when you have a, a verb, there are different voices to a verb. And what that means is... The subject. Is the subject doing the verb or is the verb being done to the subject? Now let me give you an example. So let's say my sentence is, I kick the dog, all right? Which I would never do, but that's my sentence. I kick the dog. Kick is the verb, I am the subject. So I am doing the kicking to something else. That's, what we, that's the way we usually use verbs. But there's also a passive form where the subject is having the verb done to it. So that would be, I am kicked, presumably by the dog, if we're following the same example. So I kick the dog is active, I am kicked by the dog is passive, but there is a third voice. I know you were like, oh, I hope there's another voice, Sean. And that one is called reflexive. And that means that the subject has it done to itself or himself. So that would be, I am kicking myself. Okay, that's reflexive. So I kick myself. Now, coming back to this reading, the reason why I explain that is because this verb is passive. The families of the earth will be blessed, but it, this Hebrew verb, it can also be reflexive. And that's how Jacob would have understood it. And what that would have meant is this. By you, all the families of the earth will bless themselves. So, all right, well, what is that? How do, you, how do you bless yourself by someone else? Well, if you think back to different Old Testament 
passages that you've read, it actually happens quite a bit. That one person is blessing another person by saying, may the Lord do such and such. And often if someone's being sent out, it might be uh, a relative, right? Or you're sending out your child. Uh, and they'll say something like, may the Lord bless you so that you are fruitful like the family of Perez or something like that. That happened a lot in the Old Testament. And that's what this means. So the idea, what he's saying to Jacob is, you, your, your family is going to, and your, your family line is going to get so huge, and it's basically going to be a nation, and it's, gonna, it's going to be so, your, your family is going to be so large that everybody, like the whole world is going to know, and they're going to be blown away, and they're going to be blessing each other by, you know, in, invoking your name. By saying to their kids, may your family be like the family of Jacob. That's what he, that's what he, that's one way to translate this, and that's how Jacob would have understood it. However, because the Holy Spirit has inspired all of Scripture and gave the Apostle Paul insight, we know that that other translation, the passive form, that that is also what the Lord means. So how is it then also that in you all the families of the earth will be blessed? How is that possible? This guy from like 3,000 years ago, 4,000, yeah, more like 4,000 years ago, some random guy in Israel, how in the world could all the families of the earth not only bless themselves in his name, but be blessed in him? And the Apostle Paul explains this in Galatians. And it's in the third chapter. I'm just going to read a little section of it. Because the, the Apostle Paul here, he had planted this church in this region. And it, it went well. A bunch of people got saved. He used to talk about miracles that happened. But since then, there had, they've been creeping back into, depending on works for salvation. Because these people had a Jewish background. But he had shown them that the way to salvation is faith in Jesus. The works of the law can't save you. They're not bad things, but they're just not able to save you. And, and, and that was part of his gospel. He explains that. You can't keep all the works of the law. But Jesus could, and he did, and he did perfectly. So when he died on the cross, he took care of all of it. And when you put your faith in Jesus for salvation, you receive that salvation that he earned by fulfilling the law. But they were falling back into depending on the law for their salvation. So he ends up explaining to them how the, the promise of salvation by faith was always there, even in the Old Testament, even in the promises given to Jacob and the same one given to Abraham. So check this out. He says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law? Or by hearing with faith? Are you so foolish, having begun by the Spirit? Are you now being perfected by the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you do so by works of the law? Or by hearing with faith? And now he starts getting into the Old Testament. Just as, quote, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Now then... Know then, excuse me, that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. And just a few verses down, he says this, that... In Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. So here, even when God is revealing himself to Jacob and giving him this specific promise about a particular plot of land and about his physical descendants, at the same time, he's also revealing that in you all the nations will be blessed because Jesus is going to come through you. Jacob doesn't know that, but we know that now. It has been revealed that the Lord Jesus Christ has come into the world. Salvation does not belong only to the Jewish nations, 
Jewish nation. It has been opened up to all of mankind, including us. <clears throat> now Jesus, when he is speaking with Nathaniel, he makes that connection to himself because of the latter. So we have the, the promise itself that kind of secretly mentions Jesus, but then also that ladder that is set up between heaven and earth. And Jesus said to Nathanael, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So as we're in this uh, particular feast day of St. Michael and the Holy Angels, again, Let's follow their example by being focused on Christ and remembering that we are his servants and we, it's all about him. It's all about pointing to Jesus. If he is the ladder between heaven and earth, that means that he is, as the Bible says, the only mediator between God and man. It's, it's actually, it's not anybody else. It's not any human being alive or dead. Right? We pray for one another, and we even know that the saints are praying for us, the great cloud of witnesses. And we know that there are these other beings that God uh, is using for his purposes, and we, we honor that, and we, you know, we acknowledge all of God's creation, but we, we have to remember that the focus is always to be primarily on Jesus, that it's all through him. He is the God-man. He is that ladder. Because in him, heaven and earth is brought together. God and man are reconciled through what he did on the cross, but even starting at the incarnation, God and man came back together in the person of Jesus Christ. And then he went to the cross for us and died for us. And it's that gospel that's so simple. We are blessed, including all the nations of the earth, by what Jesus Christ did. It's all about him. It's all about giving him the glory and spreading his gospel to others through our lives and when we have the opportunity to open our mouths and share that gospel, to share that good news. So glory be to Christ and to, clo to close just this time of uh, the, the sermon, I would just like to pray real quick if you would pray with me and bow your heads please. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you God for your goodness, your love, and your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the example of your angels, and I just pray, Lord God, that you would just seal your word upon our hearts and that you would give us grace to live the transformed life, to walk in your ways and to bring you glory with what we do. Uh, may our lives bring glory to you and please you, Lord. And we pray for these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God of true God. He God is not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us met in our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge those quick in the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever living God.
God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, Amen. 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 we beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively work, and rightfully and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in thy mercy, Hear our prayer. and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Prosper, we pray, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and help us to fulfill thy great commission, making disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that thou hast commanded. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We lift up to you Carol Miller, Lord God, and also we pray for Janice. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. We also bless thy holy name for all thy servants, departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayers. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, are in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine thy majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these earnest doings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our, G our Savior Jesus Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet right, right, right so to do. do. It is very neat, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, of Zion in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you, and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O mercifully Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall part be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, 
not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. With thy spirit. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord we I remember that thou, that thou shalt come, come under, under my roof, but speak, speak the word only, and, and my soul shall, shall be healed. which was given let us pray almighty and ever living God we most heartily, heartily thank thee for that thou dost not say to feed us who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of his most precious death and passion. And we humbly beseech to thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, the world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you.